Welcome everyone to the Rainmaker Podcast. You know all we interview are Rainmakers and we definitely have one for you here on today. Kevin Alexander. Hey Kevin, man. How you doing, man? Thanks so much for being here with us today. Definitely appreciate you, my friend. Hey, I thank y'all for having me on here, Earl. It's always a good time. Enjoy visiting with you guys, talking and helping out, doing anything we can. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Kevin, I mean, you are one of the rainmakers that we know personally here at Arturo Johnson Consulting um, because you're actually one of our clients. So this is probably the first Rainmaker podcast that we're doing here with one of our clients. But Kevin, let's get some of your, a little bit of your backstory here, man. How long have you been in the life insurance industry? When did this all kick off for you? I've uh, been in the uh, life insurance business, the actual just doing life insurance since about November of 2019. So just over two years that I've been in the actual life insurance. Now, I was in the business Medicare side of it several years ago, but just doing life insurance 100% been uh, since November of uh, 2019. Wow. Okay. So the past couple of years here, just exclusively doing life insurance. Do you have a preference? It's like you've done Medicare. I've never done Medicare. I could have, which all life insurance agents can do if they're life and health. But is there one you, you seem to like better than the other or, or what kind of made you switch? I definitely like the uh, the life insurance side. I've done them both. Medicare business was good to me uh, when I was doing it in uh, years before because you do, you get the big renewals yeah. and that always makes a nice little nest egg to come into. But what I figured out about the life insurance, man, is you get a lot bigger, you get a lot bigger payday up front. So uh, kind of the way I look at it is, uh, you know, the renewals are great, but uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and pay me up front. And let's, uh, let's keep on building. I hear that one right there. Look, <laughs> what kind of hey, got me, you? Yeah. I mean, Kev, what kind of really got you even to look at like life and health? Like when you got into the Medicare industry first, what was kind of happening with you then that made you like say, you know what, I think I want to go down this road. Um, you know, I've been in sales even before that. I had a very, very successful business before that, Earl, um, to where actually I owned a uh, mobile home dealership. Um, and I had, I had about 50 something houses on my lot, 50 something mobile homes on my lot in my, in my early twenties, uh, mid to twenties. As a matter of fact, I was a sales manager for one of the biggest, uh, uh, biggest dealerships, uh, in the nation back then, 365, uh, dealer, uh, 365 stores nationwide. Um, so I was very, very young, made it to management there very, very quick, uh, took a sales center there, uh, that was in the bottom 10, uh, back in the late nineties. And uh, within nine months, we had it in the top 10 out of 365 sales centers nationwide. Wow. So uh, that the dynamics of that business started changing back. And I see a lot of fine companies going out of business, a lot of finance companies uh, uh, just completely uh, going away from the business. So when I started making a transition out of that, that was when I stepped into uh, the insurance business, uh, went and got my life and health license, um, learned, uh, went to work uh, for one company. And I was there for six months. The first company I went to, I worked there for six months and they, uh, they ended up going out of business. So after six oh, wow. months, I said, well, I said, man, I learned the business. So uh, I went to work and started my own agency after six months being in it and uh, become the uh, number one uh, agency back then. Uh, that's the company that I worked for had in the nation. Well, it sounds like wherever you go, you win and they wind up winning because of you too. So, I mean, has that just kind of been, this is an entrepreneurial mindset is kind of, of, of what I'm hearing. Have you kind of always been that way or how did that come about for you? Yeah, I've never been real good at working for other people. And it's not because I'm not a hard worker. You know? I, mean, I, I mean, I'll work, man. I'll go bail to bail. But man, uh, what I do is once I get in there and figure out what somebody else is doing, you know, I watch and I learn. Yeah. Uh, then I'm like, hey, why can't we do this? You know, when I was in the mobile home business, selling mobile home years ago, I went to work for a company. I made it to management. I learned that. And then I went and opened my own dealership. Wow. You know, went and, uh, went and got the flooring. Matter of fact, the first loan I ever took out, Earl, I, bought a, I, I did a personal loan from a man. I borrowed $25,000 from him to get going good. To, I needed 25000 to add to what I had to get going. I told him I'd pay him 50000 back in a year if he'd loan me the money. He gave wow. me the 25000 I paid him back 50000 in almost in just under four months. 
So uh, I know it's double, but that's how sure I was that this yeah. was going to be a success. That's how sure I was <clears throat> that I was willing to double. I knew it was going to be a success. I was confident in myself. I was confident in the abilities that I had. Mm-hmm. And I was willing to do whatever it took. And I told this man, I said, listen, if you give me this $25,000, you loan it to me, I'll pay you back 50000 inside a year. And I paid him back 50000 in just under four months. So he was, he was always calling me up ready to give me more money. Oh, I'm sure know? he was. <laughs> so, uh, I got so some right a, now. You want to get some of this? <laughs> yeah, I could call him right now. I bet I could call him right now and say, hey, I need a loan. And he'd probably do it. You know what I mean? That's been, that's been 20 years ago, however long ago it's been. Yeah. So uh, it was just, uh, I've always had an idea. I don't know. I mean, I think it's a gift from God mm-hmm. that, uh, man, whatever, whatever I put my hand to, uh, as long as I put the work in, as long as I put the effort in, as long as I keep the integrity and the character, I believe God's going to breathe on it and bless it. And I've got that kind confidence it's not the confidence in me i just got my the confidence in whatever i put my hand to god's gonna bless it you know and i think your your confidence um really comes across like just in the way that you talk and everything else and i mean i've been on several calls with you as you know and a lot of people look to you for leadership and it's it's something to see when someone that like yourself commands that authority not trying to be but that's just who you are right what is it that you think probably needs to happen with that brand new life insurance agent out there right now that is probably watching this video of you? What do they need to do, you know, Kevin, to, to really be successful? They can't be you, but what do you yeah. think they need? One of the things that I did, even when I got back into the life insurance um, back in 2019, when I was getting into it, because I, I didn't keep up my continuing education over all the years. So there came a time there when I lost my license. So I had to go back and get my license again. Mm. So during the time that I was waiting to get uh, with the company I was with, FFL, getting contracted with them, while I was waiting on my contracts with all the carriers and everything to go through, I didn't think of myself as that I, always, that I already knew it all. I mean, I knew I'd had some successful businesses. I'd seen some success in the past. But what I did was I completely, man, I just saturated myself with grabbing a hold of learning what to do. I was watching live dials. I was going on YouTube and I was Mm -hmm. watching what to say. There were some of them, Earl, that I was watching so much that I could speak along with the people that were on the phones. I knew it was going to be said. I printed the scripts out. I memorized the scripts. I, uh, I, I, everything that I could grab a hold of to sharpen my edge because I knew when I got back on the phone, I was going to be rusty. So I wanted to knock as much rust of that off as possible. I, I, I don't want to look stupid in front of nobody. When I get on the phone, when I'm talking to somebody, if I'm on yeah. the phone or if I'm yeah. going face to face, I don't want to look dumb. I spent the time uh, going through the practice apps on the companies that had them. I spent the time uh, uh, investing into myself, knocking all of that rust off, knocking that fear down, knocking that doubt down. Because every time we gain knowledge, we're knocking that doubt down. We're knocking that fear down. So I did as much as I could. I learned as much as I could. I found my favorite trainers, the trainers that I liked the best. And I watched all their videos, man. And I had my three or four trainers that I liked. I went through watching those videos, watching those videos, watching those videos to the point, Earl, when I said a while ago that I could, that I could talk along with the videos. That was what I did. I talked, then I, then I got in and I started learning the products. Okay. And I would sit and I read over the applications. I read over the health questions. I read over it all. And most people, it's sad to say, but most people, when they get into this business, they're not willing to put that time, that effort, that amount of learning into it to grab a hold of it. They hear about the money. They hear about the opportunities that you have, but the ones that have those opportunities, the ones that make that kind of money, the ones that are bringing in those type of paydays, the ones that are having the type of success and the freedom, that didn't just happen overnight. These men and women have put in the work. They've invested into their, they've invested into their sales. Yeah. And what you're seeing is the fruit, the return on their investment. And if a man's not willing to invest into himself, then he ought not to expect anything in return. Well, that's true. So that. that was it. So that was how I got ready, man. When I picked up the phone, man, I uh, objection. I printed off uh, overcoming objection. Yeah. Workbooks, man. I had those objections down. I mean, because it took me about four or five weeks to get my license back. So I just completely just put my face into learning everything I could. And the hardest part of that was, was me knowing in my mind that I was pretty good at what I done. 
Yeah. You know, and we got to lay all pride aside. We got to humble ourselves That's and come true. to the point of understanding that I may not know everything. I still listen to training videos. I still listen to people. I still go on and do that stuff. And so I think that's the hardest part to get people to grab a hold of and understand is that you are going to have to educate yourself on what it is that you want to be successful at. Absolutely. I mean, the people at the top of their game have coaches, you know, yeah. Michael Jordan had a coach, you know, Serena yes. Williams has a coach, you know, all the greats have a coach yeah. and they go back to the basics. You know, it's, it's one of those things where if you lose track of that and think that you, you now know it all, um, yeah that's when you start to lose traction and ground. I'm going to get into here in a moment, just to talk about some of your, your APV and stuff like that, annualized premium. But it's like with where it is that you are right now, and you do have definitely have a no nonsense attitude about the whole approach. Talk to us a little bit about some of the most common objections that life insurance agents get, but complain about, but irritate you that they complain about it. Man, I'll tell you what, the most common objections that you get, especially if you're doing it over the phone, is I don't give my private information out over the phone, or I got to talk to my wife or my husband, or, you know, email me something and, uh, you know, let me read over it, let me look at it. Those are probably the three uh, biggest uh, are the most common things that we run into uh, if we're doing it over the phones. And many times, if you're out in the house, many times I want to think about it or, you know, let me talk to my spouse or, you know, whatever it may be. But th those are usually the three biggest ones. Wow. Well, I mean, you've been making some bitty, pr some pretty big strides. That was a tongue twister for some reason for me. Some pretty big strides over the past couple of months. Like, what are you consistently doing, like, over the past three, four months as far as production-wise yourself? My average on my own pen since I started with y'all has been, uh, it's come down to, I believe I was figuring it the other day. My average on my own pen each month is 76600 Wow. That's amazing. And some people don't do that in a year. And you're crushing that down in 30 days. As a matter you know, of fact, today we are forty eight hundred away from hitting that seventy six six. So we got to pick up a couple more, a couple more deals today. Couple more I deals, and this is a short month, but yeah. you still got a couple of days to go. So that's right. That's you'll right. hit it. I'm not even worried about that. And that we week. was in Miami for what four or five days this week. For oh, that's right week. for the convention. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. You know, let's talk a little bit about about your staff. I know you probably want to give them some accolades as far as with what they do help you with their. How have you been able to train such an amazing staff to be able to do that? I'll tell you what, today? I got a couple of people. I got about three people. Um, number one, let's see, I got I got David. I mean, mm -hmm. me and him, me and him, we're pretty much hooked at the hip, you know. Mm -hmm. David, when he come into this business, he knew absolutely nothing about it. And David is one of the guys. As a matter of fact, I was telling him out there the other day, I was talking to him. I said, David, there's not a lot of people that can work together like you and I work together. I mean, I know him. He knows me so well that we know what the other person's going to do, mm -hmm. you know, uh, without even really having to talk to him or ask him. But uh, David, he's another one that's jumped in there, man. He uh, he he invested into himself. He took what I told him to do. He watched the videos. He watched the training. He got familiar with the scripts. And then he his office is four inches away from my office. The only thing separating us is a wall. So when I sit in there and hear him talk on the phones now, he's heard me talk. He's heard me say things. He's heard that so much that now whenever I hear him talk, it's almost like I'm playing a recording back. And he's grabbing a hold of that stuff, and he's done it. So he invested into himself. He humbled himself. He was willing to listen, allowed me to correct him when he needed correction, didn't gripe about it, didn't complain about it, didn't think that he could do it better or that he had a better way. He went with what was working. He seen that the success that I was having, and that's what he mimicked. And that was all I did. I seen the success that other people were having when I was listening to other trainers. I mimicked their success and get the same results that they get. Yeah. So David, man, he's a huge help. I got a, I got a, a lady that works for us. Her name is Bailey. Um, actually, that's my daughter. Um, mm -hmm. She comes in and she works some um, uh, part time. And to hear her on the phone, sometimes I'll sit there and to hear her on the phone. And she sets appointments for me also, just boom, 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 handling stuff. And to hear her on the phone, she sounds like me. I'm sitting there going, Bailey, you're not supposed to sound like me. You're a sweet young lady. <laughs> that's how you do it. 
You know? so, so when I hear it, but they pick up and they listen uh, uh, and they just grab a hold of it. I got a guy named John that's working right now. He's out here working on the on our CRM right now, putting memes together and putting stuff together yeah. uh, in order to come in and start sending out. He's really mastering our CRM and everything on that. So I got a staff that is really, really around me of people that are really, really good. I got another guy uh, that I'm working with right now. I just gave him the, uh, the script that I use. And I told him, I said, here's what I want you to do. I said, I want you to ask no questions. Questions. I don't want you to come to me asking me about anything. I want you to take the script home. You got a week to memorize it. Memorize mm-hmm. this script. Memorize this right here. And I gave it to him. So I got a staff man, David, that uh, he's just he's just awesome. You know him. He takes care of all the technical stuff, all the other yeah. stuff. David's a beast. awesome on the phones. <laughs> Bailey, awesome on the phones. John. Uh, can pick up the phones and work on them also. Awesome on the CRM. So I've got a staff behind me. I got my wife that's starting to handle our contracting for hiring and all okay. that stuff now. So, uh, so I know right now, you know, some people say family is not always best to work with you. But the way I look at that is I told my daughter, she's married. I said, listen, I want to build this thing. You, you come in here and you work this like a job and you help us build this. Mm-hmm. It's going to benefit you too one day. Yeah. It's going to benefit you too one day. So uh, we've kind of grabbed a hold of that, man. We're just, we're taking off with it. We're, we're going to run with it. Our I next goal is to, is to build so recruiting heavy. That was going to be my next question. What's what's your goal this year? Like, what are you really looking to do? Man, you, we've talked about it. You know, Earl, me and you've talked about it. Me and uh, Arturo's talked about it. Uh, when I open up my phone right here, I'll show you this. This is uh, this is what I see. Every time I open my phone, you see that right there? I don't know if y'all can see that. It says oh, yeah, 400,000, 400, 1 million. million. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. That's a minimum. That 400,000 on the top is my personal production that I want to do absolutely every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2021, I hit right at 600,000 on personal production. That 1 million under that, that's yeah. what I want to do per month as an agency. So every time I open my phone, I see that 400,000, that 1 million as a reminder. That every time when I open my phone, I cannot not think about that. Yeah. So I've, yeah. I've achieved the first half of that goal, which is that 400,000. I've achieved it two years in a row. Now I want to start going for that million. Now I want to start building my agency. That is my goal is over the next couple of years to build to the point to where we're, we're producing a million dollars a month as an agency. That is phenomenal. And, and you know what? I, I'm not even going to quit. I have no doubt that you're going to do it. That, that you're going yeah. to build to that. I mean, people can hear the conviction in your voice. They can hear the determination and that leadership that you have right there and personal accountability. And I mean, yeah. you've got, you're the full package. So we definitely know that. Well, I mean, Kevin, I definitely want to thank you for being here with us today, man. Um, I appreciate the time that you've spent and just giving your own insight, you know, to what you've been able to do and to help courage so, encourage so many others. So thank you so much for being here with me. I definitely appreciate it, Kevin. Earl, we appreciate y'all, man. Everything y'all do, if it wasn't for y'all, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. So thumbs up to y'all, man. Thanks a lot, man. And thank you to the viewers that are watching. Make sure that you click the links below. Look, if you want to know what it is to work with Arturo Johnson Consulting, go ahead and click the link below. Book a phone call. Maybe it's a good fit. Maybe it's not. But you don't know until you make the call. Until next time.